Hello, good morning and welcome to Mosque Evening Church. It's wonderful to have the people we have here with us today, this morning, but also to everybody who is online with us as well. Or maybe you're just re-watching this on YouTube, we want to give you a warm welcome as well. It's good, isn't it, to get to another Sunday and to get to another opportunity to, to spend time in the presence of God to be able to worship in later at 4 o'clock for the worship service and just to be able to give God that time that he so rightly deserves. I'm just going to um, read from the Bible and um, I'm going to read from the passage that and a story we will know well and a story that I sort of mentioned um, a few weeks back on our first week back here and it's about Elijah and he's fleeing and he is he, he's depressed for a better word he's he's ready to give up his life he, he feels like there's no way out and then it says this from verse 9 there he went into a cave and spent the night and the word of the lord came to him what are you doing here elijah he replied i've been very zealous for the lord god almighty the israelites have rejected your covenant Broken down the altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. You can see why he was upset. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earth. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel, king over Aram. Amen. It's just a few things I just want to very, very briefly note on this. You see, we see God many times in the noise, don't we? And rightly so, and like tonight at four o'clock, I encourage us to be as noisy as we can as we worship Him. And we see God in the noise many times, but this is very much here to remind us that God is also in the whisper as well. But what Elijah does, he does a few things. Firstly, he goes up to the mountain, he makes the effort, he takes the climb. And we've done that today, we're here. Now we're here online, we've made our effort to go up the mountain. And then in the whisper, he lays it before God. In the whisper, God answers. And my prayer is that we will do three things beauty, bold, and brave. That we will reflect on his beauty. That we will be bold enough to lay things down before him when we need to. And we will be brave enough to listen and act just like Elijah does. That's for us, not just for us here, but that's for you online as well. This is a reflective service and I want to encourage you to reflect in the beauty of God just as much as we will here as well. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you because you are a great God. We thank you, Lord, that you brought us here today here online, here on YouTube, whichever way it is, Lord. You've brought us here because you are faithful and you are loving and you are a good, good God. And we thank you, Father God, because we can reach with you in the noise, but we can also reach you in the whisper and the reflective thus, Lord. And we thank you for that. And we pray, Lord, now that as we do that, Lord, Father God, would we reach you? Would we connect with you? Would you take distractions aside, Lord Jesus, so that we could just reflect upon your beauty, 
that we would, Father God, be bold enough to lay things before you. Because as we do that, we are also brave enough to know that you would look for us to listen, but to also act upon it. Lord, would you change our lives once again this morning? Would you strengthen us, renew us, energise us? You know, we just read with Elijah, and all of that happened as he was out of lows. He was struggling. And Father God, for some of us here, and some of us online, we may be really struggling. And we come before you now, in reflection of the whispering of God, so that we would hear your voice, Lord, we pray. Your precious name, speak to us, connect with us, change our hearts, renew us and strengthen us, we pray. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen.
in a mind just reflecting on those words. Those from the beautiful song. Our God is able. Lifted up, defeated the grave. That's why he is able. He's able to all situations. He's lifted up and defeated the grave in all situations. He's lifted up, he's defeated the grave, he is able in your worries. He's lifted up, he's defeated the grave, God is able in your injuries and in your illnesses and in your pains. be like Elijah and to be bold and lay before him the God that is lifted up that has defeated the grave that is able so spend time doing that now laying before him Lord Father God, for all of those who have just laid things before you, worries, stresses, illnesses, injuries, hurts, pains, making people just need a refreshing and a renewing of your Holy Spirit, maybe just needed a, a reminder of who you are, for those people who just need a wink or an encouragement. Lord Father God, as we've said that and as we pray these things in the gentleness and the whisper, Lord, we come before you with the same faith of Elijah, knowing that you talk to us, that you are passing by. We're on top of the mountain. Lord, would you pass by? Would you heal? Would you show love? Would you show grace and mercy? Would you convict if you need to? Would you renew and would you strengthen? Would you give advice? Would you help us to know that we are never alone? And now let's just spend a moment as we've done that, let's go to the God that is able again. And let's pray about this COVID-19 situation. We're all concerned by it. We're all worried by it. Just lay it before God now. Father God, we come before you and we pray once again, once again against COVID 19, Lord. And Lord, we've seen the news. We've seen that there's announcements tomorrow, possibly extra restrictions. We've seen the news that Sheffield is growing. COVID-19 and we come before you humbly Lord before our living God, our God that has is lifted up and defeated the grave and is able and we pray Father God that you would enter into this situation Lord. Lord Father God would you give uh, our Prime Minister and, and the MPs wisdom Lord and knowledge and ability, Lord, to be able to deal with this. For those, Father God, who may be facing job losses, Lord, Father God, would you be with them? Would you give them comfort and peace and help? 
Would you save those jobs that have been taken? For those that have been treated and lost once again, or maybe a fear because of the COVID-19 and people who may be loved ones who are ill, Lord Father God, would you be with them? Would you help them and strengthen them? Encourage them, Lord, with prayer. For all of those frontline workers, we do not forget all of those things that they have done over the last six months. And no doubt many of them are so tired and exhausted and now possibly entering another second spiral. Would you give them strength? Would you give them strength that they need? Would you give us the strength and the energy and the protection that we need as well, Lord, we pray? We pray this in the only name we can pray. Faithful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. So, as we know at this point, uh, we have this microphone here, and, and we ask, or have been asking, because there's so much news, isn't there? And every time you go on the news, it's, you, you don't feel good after you've watched it, do you? And um, so we've been saying, let's share some good news instead. Let's share some testimonies about the power of God. And it doesn't have to be something that's happening today or now. It could be something that's happened over the last six months. So there's three ways we can do that. You can do it live if you are here at the church. You just need to tell me so we can arrange it. Or if you are online, we are happily and would love to pre-record it and be able to show it. Or if you don't want to do either of those, you can write it down. And I'm pleased to say that our first testimony is with us today, and it has been written down, and I'm going to read it on behalf of Joy. And thank you so much for this testimony. It starts on a, <laughs> I love the title straight away to this testimony. And it says this, my testimony of thanks to the Lord. And he says this, For the Lord has been with me the last six months. When you live on your own, it is very hard. Lockdown was unbearable. Without the Lord beside me, I just don't know what I would have done. I thank him every day that he gave me strength and hope. I felt his presence when I was low. I know he was listening to my prayers. When I heard his voice, he comforted, comforted me. I had a lot of time. I had, I'm sorry, I had a lot to thank the Lord for at this time. I had a lot of support from my family, my friends, and my church family, which I thank you, Lord. I looked forward to Sunday morning for the online service to be able to worship with my church family. Praise the Lord! What a wonderful God we have! Thank you, Lord. Amen. We are allowed to clap. I think we should. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Joy, for that amazing, amazing testimony. If you do have one, please do get in touch. And just as we focus on those words, I've just got a prayer, a, a, a reflective song for us to watch. It's from Caleb and Kelsey. And I just want to encourage you not only to focus on the words, but just to focus on also what joy has shared with us today. The thanks and the praise of our great God. So let's just reflect on this. <laughs>
Let's just spend a bit of a moment just reflecting on those words that we've just seen, those words of joy. that we all will have got something out of those just last few minutes and if for each one of us I, I could get you all to come up here or, or to shout online and it would be different and that's the beauty and the power of God for me I just love that thought of being able to run to God again and again and again and again and we're invited and we are welcomed to run to him time and time again. What a great God. What a wonderful God. What a beautiful God. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your, your, your power. We thank you, Lord, and we give you thanks for this testimony of joy. We thank you, Lord, that you've been with us. That we can be encouraged by this testimony of you never leave us or forsake us. That you are with us. You're always there. I especially love the bits where it says, I felt his presence when I was alive. I know he was listening to my prayers when I heard, and when I heard his voice, he comes. May that be an encouragement to each and every one of us, we pray. And Lord Father God, now as uh, just after video news, as Sharon comes and brings the word to us, we pray you will encourage us even more. That you are speaking to our hearts, you are speaking to our lives. That we will hear you and know you, Lord Jesus. That you will speak through Sharon. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're just yeah, going to welcome play the Pastor in the church. <laughs> this is what we're eating in church in the news, and this is what's happening in the life of the church. Once again, two things are happening this week, and both of them are via Zoom. Firstly, on Tuesday at six thirty, we have our prayer meeting, um, and then on Thursday at seven o'clock, we have our Bible study. It would be great if you join us. If you don't usually join us, please do. It would be wonderful to have you with us. That's Tuesday six thirty prayer meeting, and then Thursday seven o'clock for the Bible study. Just a reminder that as a church, we rely very heavily on the generosity of your giving. And we do thank you so much, especially over the last seven months or so, as we've been in this lockdown situation for all the giving that you have given. But we just want to put once again a reminder out to you. There are a few ways that you can give. If you are live in the church, if the baskets at the back, one is for general offering, the other is for the pastor's raise, to try to raise money, so I don't have to go and get a full-time job in a couple of months at the time. really appreciate any money towards that. Other ways, if you are online uh, or watching this on YouTube, then there's three ways you can give. There is um, by texting, um, CS. 013 CS 013 to 64647. It will send the link, to, uh, click on that link and just follow the instructions. Or you can download the app and give to GRGT. Once again, just follow the instructions, put in Mosbra, um, Eden Church, Sheffield, and it will put really up what you need. Just as a warning, both of them do charge you a little bit for the giving. The best way to do it online, especially if you do know Titus, is to give it up from Titus, give the transfer details, and you can do it that way. However you have given over this period, we just want to once again 
thank you for all that you have been doing. Usually at this point of the gal, I would be going, it is next and so beats the Christmas. And we'd be getting very excited because the Christmas fair would be coming up very soon. Sadly, as it's probably no surprise to you, we won't be able to do the Christmas fair this year. But it is, let's say, 10 weeks to Christmas, and we are working hard on putting on the very best Christmas program that we can while being in under these restrictions that we find ourselves. Just want to say, start to listen out, but hopefully we'll start reading some of that information out to you and prepare yourself this year to connect and to make maybe that extra effort that's going to be needed to connect with everything that we do for Christmas this year. Let's then say weeks. Talking about making that extra effort to connect, I want to encourage you to do that tonight for the worship service this afternoon at 4 o'clock. It's going to be live and it's going to be just full of worship. And full of time just to worship and to praise God. A few people have said over the last couple of weeks who have connected that it's be a wonderful time just to be able to sing out loud our praises to God. This is the opportunity, as I spoke about quite a few weeks back where God already spoken to us in January. And one of those things was to make an opportunity as a church for us to worship. And we may be under restrictions now. So this is our opportunity to worship God at four o'clock. And that should not be an opportunity that we just pass aside or we should just ignore. This is about worshipping your God. So I want to encourage you to join us at four o'clock this afternoon as we go live and as we worship and also take communion together. This afternoon, four o'clock, let's worship. Don't forget on our website, it has everything you need to know. It has this video news, it has a link to our YouTube account where you can re-watch the services. It has a link to our sermon page where you can just re-listen to the sermons. Uh, it has a link to the giving page and um, all the information I shared earlier. It has connection pages as well. It has everything that you need. Otherwise, just leave me to say, God bless, have a great week, take care, and keep it Good morning. Good morning to people here and good morning to the people that are joining us online. Um, today, I will be continuing with our series on the fruits of the Spirit. And Galatians 5, 22, 23 says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control against such things there is no law. Today I'm going to be speaking on goodness. Now the word goodness, according to Google, it's a definition, yeah, Google is a great, great tool. And it's an hour, it means that morally good or virtuous, a belief in the basic goodness of mankind. Now these past few months, especially throughout the national lockdown, we have seen or heard of people's acts of goodness in abundance. People shopping for others, taking food parcels to the most vulnerable, checking up on them, making sure that their needs are being met. And throughout lockdown, I have received a phone call every two weeks from a man called John. He works for the local housing office at Crystal Peaks. And he's told me, just checking to see if I needed anything. Making sure that I had basic shopping in, my medication, etc. 
and John's call stopped, that I realised how much it touched me. Now you may think that surely these acts are acts of kindness. Maybe they are. But I feel if we haven't got the basic quality of morally good, the belief in the basic goodness of mankind, then those acts of kindness, they haven't got room to grow. I suppose in this day and age we can wonder where we can find a real character of goodness that we can learn from. There is no better character than the character of God. For he is the original definition of goodness. And I would like to share two stories this morning. And the first one is one of the parables that Jesus told about our Heavenly Father. There was a wealthy man who early one morning dropped by the marketplace, which is probably, I suppose, the ancient, ancient equivalent to the job centre. And where he hired a bunch of men to work his vineyard for an agreed amount of pay. A few hours later, he went back and he hired some more. And a few hours after that, he hired even more. And in fact, the owner of the vineyard hired extra workers right up until closing time. The last men were hired just one hour before sunset. As the light faded, the workers gathered to receive their pay. And they were lying up in order, the last ones hired, and working backwards. And this is when Jesus put the cat among the pigeons, as we say in Russia. Every man, no matter how long they have worked that day, received exactly the same pay. One day's wages. I bet things got a bit testy by the time the line reached its end. Low murmur passed along those who were hired early in the morning. And finally, someone just said it. This is not right. It's not fair. You've short changed us. We did most of the work today. We carried the burden under the hot sun. You, but you treated them as equals in the labour. And Jesus put these words in the mouth of the owner of the vineyard. <laughs> Didn't we agree together on what I would pay you? I kept my word to you. Now don't begrudge my desire to be generous for reasons that are mine. I wanted to do something unexpected, something crazy, something that will make these men run home to their families and say, you're not going to believe what happened to me today. And this story is based on Matthew 20. The second story is one I read while researching this word today. And it's from the Professor Takes Students Test for Them. And this took place in a classroom in Annabelle LaGrange College in Missouri in 2002. It was the day for final exams, and Denise Bandler walked into the classroom minutes before the professor arrived. Everybody in the room was doing last minute cramming. Then the professor enters, takes a few minutes to review. Most of it was familiar, but there were some things that no one remembered ever knew. The professor then spoke these words that sent chills up every student's spine. This is in your textbook, and you are responsible for the content of this exam. The time came for the test, 
teaser of the test to be for you. All the work you did in preparation for this test did not help you get the A. If we recap, there was the story about the laborers who were paid a full day's wages for an hour's work. There was a story of an already completed exam that gave every student an undeserved day. What do you think these two stories have in common? I can tell you one thing. Those aren't just the experiences in other people's lives. There isn't a single person in church this morning, or those of you who are joining us online, who hasn't experienced the outrageous, lavish, unexpected, undeserved kindness. What is more? We experience these serendipities every single day. They are poured out over us constantly. I can testify to this. By looking back over my own life, I am nowhere near the person I used to be. The person before Christ is non-existent. Praise the Lord. And that is why I can declare with total confidence today that a one unchanging truth that permeates every crease of reality. God is good. If you want to see God for who he really is, a good starting point is in 1 Chronicles 16.34. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Psalm 38, Psalm 34, verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 104 and 5, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. When Moses boldly pleaded with God, please show me your glory, he was asking to see God for who he really is. And we find God's response in Exodus 33, 19 to 20. I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. Moses wanted to see God's glory. And God showed him something so wonderful and accessible that it caused the skin of Moses' face to glow with the radiance of God's goodness. Do we fully understand the attributes of God? If you get the chance later, maybe you can meditate on the goodness of God. And I will try to be about this morning. The Bible defines God's goodness in two ways. One has to do with the character and the other focuses on his actions. Psalm 1968 captures both when he says of God, you are good and you do what is good. The first part of that verse focuses on the fact that God is by nature good, that is morally excellent, extraordinarily beautiful, deeply glad and extravagantly bountiful. But since this is God we're talking about, this goodness described to him is raised to the highest possible level. God is the original definition of good. He is good in and of himself. For us, goodness is an added quality, but it comes naturally for him. God is not just the greatest of beings, he is the best. And that's exactly what Jesus meant when he said, no one is good except God alone. Mark 10, 18. We call all kinds of things good. Oh, that steak was good. She's a good friend. That was a good film. But all that we can call good on this earth is tainted and imperfect. God alone is good. The second, second strand of the definition for God's goodness concentrates on what he does. And the Bible is full with descriptions that point to his kindness, his mercy, his steadfast love, his generosity. God 
he would put anyone off. But God still says to me, I want to be generous to you. I can't wait to pour out to you that which will make you happy. Not because you deserve it, but because there's something about who I am that loves to overflow in extravagant ways upon you. The Bible says those are actually God's thoughts about us. God is for us. He has our back. He is there looking to, to do good, to do us good. We are objects of his affection, and because of his divine nature, all that he expresses comes from an expansive, overwhelming, God-sized generosity towards us. You could be wondering this morning how God reveals his goodness. Well, I want to share with you a few of things that God that put, that broadcasts his goodness, his natural blessings. And this is the lowest level in which God expresses his goodness, and the one we tend to overlook or take for granted. David saw it clearly, and he was moved by God to write Psalm 145. A hymn of praise that celebrates God's goodness expressed in the created order. Verses 3 and 4, great is the Lord and most worthy of his praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend another of your words. They will tell of your mighty acts. Verses 7 and 9 describe what the older generation will say to the younger. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. I love verse 9. The Lord is good to everyone. And who is in the word everyone? We are. And in case you missed that, we are. And that means there is nowhere in the universe we can go where God won't do good to us. Verse 15 and 17, we read about his goodness. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he has made. Every relationship, every job, every tree, every taste of food that pleases us, every bird song, every friend and flower are a reminder of his compassion for us. Even in this strange age, we are going through. If we looked in every corner of this world and every part of our day, we will find the overflow of his generosity. We only have to look. His kind interventions. And Psalm 107 is totally devoted to this thing. And it opens up with joy. He thanks the Lord for his good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say those he redeems from the hand of the poor. There is four different scenarios where God graciously steps in to reveal his goodness in his son. First, God comes to the rescue of people who are frantically searching for something that will satisfy their soul. When they cry out to the Lord, he will deliver them and their soul will find its true home. Second, God intervenes in the lives of those who have rebelled against the word of God and suffer for it. When they repent, he delivers them from their distress, breaks the chains of sin that bind them, and turns night to day. I can relate to this. Because when I first came to Christ, I was ignorant of his existence. I had no money for him at all. And when I received Jesus into my life, I felt the heavy burdens fall from me and my darkness turned to light. Third, God intervenes on behalf of his goodness in the lives of foolish people who have given themselves to sin and by his death bringing results touching their relationships and lives. When they cry to the Lord, he heals them and reverses the killing effects of sin in their lives. Again, I can relate to this. Even though before I met with Jesus, I didn't realize I was a sinner. But I remember the feeling, the killing effects of them. The traps of my youth held me in the prisons of my mind. Fourth, God rescues those pounded like a lamb's 
the storms threaten to sink it, and we are at our wit's end, we can call to him and see him. Command, command the storms to be still, because he is good. He's been there for us more than we've ever known. No matter how, or no matter what situations we're facing this morning, God is the best person to take it to. There is no steward source of deliverance or blessing than him because he is good all the time. The sea is through God's son. Colossians 1 reminds us that Jesus, in verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God. And verse 19 says, God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Jesus is God's goodness in the flesh. He demonstrated God's desire to pour out blessing and help and deliverance in us in three ways. One, he took the judgment of our sins and he served them upon himself. Romans 5 8, God demonstrates his own love for us in while we were sinners, Christ died for us. God's extravagance flowed to us in the amazing substitution of his son in our place on the cross. Christ's death for us is the undisputed picture of the unmerited goodness. We don't deserve it. In fact, we continue to do things that prove we didn't earn it. But God is good. His nature tries to desire for us what we can't do ourselves. So he puts forward his son on our behalf to take our help and give all who believe heaven. God has already shown his goodness towards us in the biggest way possible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. When you believe that God is good all the time, it frees you to take ever-increasing steps of faith. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future. God does not withhold the good from those who live with integrity. You never miss out if you step out with God. So please, don't miss out today it's coming weeks, it's coming months. Through this pandemic, don't be sad. Step out with God. Amen.
We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the reminder of how good you are. That you are the very definition of goodness. That your goodness is character and it's action. And when we believe God is good, it enables us to make steps in faith. Because your mercy is overflowing. Because your goodness is chasing us down. What a good, good, wonderful, mighty God. And we thank you, Lord, that we can know that goodness. We can know your love. And we can know your blessings that are new every morning. And Lord Father God, as we go to this week, Lord Father God, as the week ahead of us, may we just be reminded once again that your goodness is everywhere. I love that. It's everywhere. We can't escape it. What would we want to? But we can't. And we praise you, Lord, for that. That everywhere we step, everywhere we walk, every word that we utter, every action that we do, may we show the goodness of God. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you, Sharon for your wonderful word. Thank you, Joy, for your testimony. And we thank you for everybody who has joined us online. Can I remind you again that we have a wonderful opportunity to worship God later at four o'clock this afternoon online via the website. You can sing and you can praise as loud as you want at that point. So please do join us online at four o'clock. Don't forget to WhatsApp, not only people online, but people here, because we don't get a chance to really chat after. Just WhatsApp and encourage um, people as well. That would be fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Take care, keep safe, and God bless you.